iPhones are kind of fragile. Soft aluminium, brittle glass, expendable batteries, not to mention all the chips inside. And so when it breaks, it can feel a little bleak, like it did for our graphic designer here, Sarah Butt. Last year, Sarah's iPhone 11 Pro started boot looping uncontrollably. So she took it to the Apple store and they offered her a choice, pay the $550 iPhone repair fee or pay a thousand plus dollars to buy a brand new iPhone 12. Well, she bought the new iPhone, which understandably made her sad. And it cost me my dignity. Perfect, okay. Just get a sequence of like, I don't know. But um, thank you of for letting us use your phone. R.I.P. little guy. Yeah. <gasps> Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry. <gasps> Do we have another broken phone? Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Sarah. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I I actually did get Apple Care with this. Oh, one. did you? Yeah, but. <laughs> so like. I had a different plan for like the repair video, but like we could repair that. <laughs> I mean, do you, you want to come? Want? Do you want to come and repair it? <laughs> do you have the repair kit here? It's like all set up. Really? I mean, we can. Is there a way to fix this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could. It's a good thing that Apple released their self-service repair program earlier this year, in response to years of dogged complaining from my colleagues actually, about how opaque and difficult it is to do simple repairs on Apple devices, the company relented and gave us this. <laughs> this may not look like the official website of an Apple sanctioned repair program, but it is. And here Apple lets you buy official parts and tools to fix any iPhone 12 or newer. And if you're not a repair shop, you can rent all the tools for your device for $50 for seven days. It'll come all packaged up nicely, and you'll need to make sure you return it in those seven days, or else you'll get charged. It's okay. At the end of the day, it's just a phone. You're just the nicest person in the oh. world. <laughs> I don't know like how seriously. Get it this far. Well, I, you learn from the best, like Linus, right? <laughs> All this crazy technical looking equipment is necessary to repair your phone to Apple's exacting standards. From what I've heard, the iPhone 12 and 13 are now much more difficult to pull apart, requiring this heated display removal tool and corresponding cassettes. And then for reapplying, there's the whole press and plate system for the battery, adhesive, and final display. So you'll have to buy or rent this equipment. And if you want to buy it, say to set up a repair shop like what we have here, it'll set you back around $1,700. And you'll have to spend time organizing everything. Let me show you an example of how confusing things can get. This is listed on the website and in my invoice as a 6.1 inch iPhone repair tray. This is also listed as a 6.1 inch iPhone repair tray, but this one is designed to work with the iPhone 13, and this one works with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, which means you have to literally put a label on everything just to figure out what's for what. But when you do have it all sorted, what you're left with is a pretty authentic looking repair space. You get to play Apple Genius for a day, like Sarah. Ta-da! Whoa. <laughs> So this is all the repair stuff. This is the evil scientist lab, it seems. Uh, it does look like it, doesn't it? Yeah. This is everything you need to repair an iPhone prop er, properly, including... A manual. <laughs> Apple's repair manual is a pretty comprehensive document showcasing all the steps and tools involved with repairing the iPhone. And they're pretty adamant that you read it. For instance, if you wanna buy a replacement part for your iPhone, you have to input a code only found in the repair manual. Flip the switch on the back of the heated display. The back. I don't There's really wanna get up. Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Gently insert the iPhone into the heated display pocket with the display face up. My phone more. Okay, there. She's in there. And now we put on the heat resistant gloves, align the cutout to the bottom pocket, which is this. Yeah. And then slide her on in there. Oh, it clicks in. It smells like something's happening. So apparently it is much harder to open up an iPhone 12 and above than it is to open an older one. The older ones can use this thing. Wow. Oh. Oh. Oh, you have 15 minutes. Oh, ah. oh to do what? Wait, turn the knob on the fixture. Do it quick. 
So I think it's $50 to rent for a week that all the kit. That's actually not bad at all. So let's say you're out of Apple Care. Okay. Your battery wears out and your screen breaks because your clumsy coworker drops your phone. Would you go to the Apple store and pay, I guess it comes out to probably $450 to get the screen and battery replaced and let it Apple Genius do it? Or would you pay around the same amount of money to rent the equipment and buy the parts and do it yourself? Well, we haven't quite gone to the point to see whether or not this works. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm too early asking that question. <laughs> but if it does, you know, it's kind of a fun experience to get down to the nitty gritty and do it yourself. Yeah. So I think it's worth a shot. Okay. Oh, there. There she is. Whoa. Whoa. That's so cool. There are still some annoying limitations to Apple's self-service program. First off, it only supports anything from the iPhone 12 and made after, and it only supports repairing the bottom speaker, the battery, the camera, the display, the SIM tray, and the Taptic engine. Everything else, like the back glass, the logic board, you know, things that actually do break and are really annoying when they do, you can't fix. Which means for Sarah and her iPhone 11 Pro, she probably has a logic board issue, she wouldn't have been able to repair it herself anyway. How's it going over there? It's a work in progress. <laughs> I have seen crazy looking laser machines that can remove the back glass from an iPhone shell, but it's not a straightforward repair. And there's no repair manual for it. Likewise, Sarah's iPhone 11 Pro most likely has an issue with the Face ID ribbon cable. That'd be nice to fix too. It says don't damage the flex cables, but I think they're good. Okay. I feel like a secret spy, like hacking, hacking the mainframe oh, here. Oh yeah, you got the black shirt on. Removing the battery is arguably the most dangerous part of the process, and Apple does everything to scare you into caution in the repair manual. This is the scary part. This it is, is the part. It's kind of funny that this is the scary part, yeah. This is the part where we could die. <laughs> we could have an emergency. That box of sand underneath the desk is there because it's the only way to deal with a fire were it to happen. <laughs> if Apple were so concerned about the danger of battery removal, why then have they made it so hard to pull the adhesive with the tweezers they recommend? Oh, oh you did it! Wow. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, right? <gasps> no! <laughs> Success! All right, so as Sarah struggles with the battery, let me give you a word from this video sponsor, Joby. They're known for making creators' videos look better with their Gorillapod, and now they're looking to make their videos sound better. With their Wavo Pro, Air and Lav Pro for running gun camera work, or their Pod for streamers and podcasters, they have all the microphones you will need to take your video content to the next level. Trust me on one thing, good audio makes all the difference, so check out their lineup of mics in the link below. They're just so small. I know, okay. No! <laughs> Where did go? I have like Hawkeyes, so I might be able oh, to really? find it. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have 2020 vision. So we should probably talk about costs again, cause it's not exactly economical for individual users like Sarah. Sarah has Apple Care Plus, so this fix would only set her back $30. Going to the Apple Store without Apple Care Plus would set us back $280 for the screen and another $70 for a battery, so around about $350. To do it yourself with the equipment rental and necessary parts, the total comes out to $20 of savings if you return the broken parts for a credit. Oh, here it is. Oh, where? Right oh, here. Whoa. But let's just talk about the repair process. Okay. How was it putting doing this? I enjoyed it. I felt like a scientist. And now it's so rewarding afterwards because I did it properly. Yeah. Now would it be worth, is it worth, as we determine it, costs around the same amount of no. money? No, the answer is no, it wouldn't be worth it. Important display message. Unable to determine if your iPhone displays genuine Apple part, it is. Uh, go to the settings for more information. Settings. So yeah, hit settings. So we have to do, if you replace your phone screen or battery or camera, is you need to go through a system configuration process, which means you have to go onto the website and deal with someone in the Apple chat. 
which is kind of annoying. So now I have to go through that. Yeah, no, I did it. And it sure is an experience. Am I chatting with a bot? This, by the way, is taking multiple days and sessions of chats because when something doesn't work, they kind of give up on you and you have to wait a bit before you can try again. I was having troubles putting my phone into diagnostics mode, but it turns out that the up volume button on this phone is broken, which may be our fault. Nonetheless, the screen and battery are approved and Face ID works. Now, about getting that credit back, it's another bunch of chats. If you just replaced a normal part, you should be able to print a shipping label no problem. But because we replaced the battery as well, my only option is to arrange a pickup to get the full refund. If I just replaced the battery, I could bring it to a local recycling depot and I guess tell them that I did it. It's not entirely clear how all this works. Am I gonna have to contact Apple to be like, well, hey, or are you gonna do that for me? So, um, that wasn't your phone. What? <laughs> this is your phone. Uh, we bought a broken phone that was exactly like your phone, and then uh, pretended to break your phone, but didn't break your phone. Your phone's fine. I told you, your phone was, was fine the whole time I was saying your phone was fine. Got pranked. It was a prank! What? I'm so confused. How did you do that? How did... <gasps> well, I had a bit of help. <laughs> I had Jake. I had Jake back up your phone and do a restore on the. Uh... I can't believe you tricked her the whole time. I figured she'd find out. No, I was just like. She was being really I good. Really she was did really generous. To feel bad. I she was, was like, so oh, nice. She's one of the nicest people <laughs> in the world. I think it's one thing we've learned in this video. Is Sarah's <laughs> so nice. Thanks for fixing this Mac address. If you think that you can fix your own iPhone like Sarah did, well, give this video a like. And if you want to watch more prank videos, then you might as well subscribe the channel, super fun. Now, I'm curious, do you think Apple's self-serve program is great or do they need to go a bit farther, including more devices and more things to fix? And would that actually make things any better? Comment below.